close your eyes and watch your breath. When you breathe in, where do you feel it? When you breathe out, where do you feel it? How does it feel? Does it feel right for the body right now? You're developing a quality called alertness. We rarely pay attention to things. We have so many preconceived notions about the breath, so many preconceived notions about everything else in life. But working with the breath, you begin to realize that some of those notions are not quite what you thought they were, or they're not at least not in line with what's actually going on. So try to put them aside for the time being and look at what's actually going on. And this is a good lesson to apply to your life. We go into so many situations with preconceived notions. And then we look around in those situations for things that will confirm our notions and block out the things that don't. And that way we miss a lot. This is one of the ways in which we suffer from ignorance. I mean, the causes of, for suffering are happening within us all the time, and yet we don't see them. Our attention is diverted someplace else. So if you want to see things as they're actually happening, you have to learn how to put your preconceived notions aside and just watch what's actually happening. Start with something simple like the breath. It's very close to you, yet there's so little we know about it. How far does the breath go in the body? If you have a picture of it stopping in the lungs, well, that can be awfully limiting, because we're trying to put the mind in a state where you can gain a sense of pleasure, a sense of ease, a sense of fullness that you can then spread throughout the entire body, down to the tips of the fingers, down to the tips of the toes. And a breath that goes only into the lungs and goes out through the nose is not going to be able to induce that. So change your picture. Change your picture of the breath. Think of the breath going through the whole body, and then see what that does. It makes it a lot easier to take a sense of ease that you say feel in the chest and let it go down the front of the body, down the back of the body. This picture, of course, will be another preconceived notion, but it actually is helpful. We're using perceptions, and our pr main problem in life is not so much that we have perceptions, that we use the wrong ones for the wrong situations. So you have to learn how to read the situation and ask yourself, okay, what's needed here? What kind of perception would be helpful? And learn to have quite a few different kinds of perceptions at your fingertips, so you can pull them out when you need them. If one perception is making you suffer, step back and say, there must be some other way of looking at this. This is why we listen to Dharma talks, and this is why we read the Dharma, so we can get some ideas of alternative ways of looking at the world that can be helpful. Even when you get something that works in one situation where you had had problems before, don't think you've got a silver bullet that can use all situations. But think of it as something you've added to your repertoire. That way you can find that you create less and less suffering for yourself. And you create more and more knowledge of what's actually going on. And it's through knowledge that we can gain control over things. And it's through that sense of control, if we use it rightly, that we can find that we too can put an end to suffering as well. 